video. I understand. Okay. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in podcast land. You are in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza, and I am so excited to talk with our guest today, talking about putting your seatbelt in, guys. You need to fasten your seatbelts for sure. We are going to talk to our guest, and he's laughing because of what his expertise is. We're going to talk, uh, I think we're going to have a lighthearted talk about life after uh, this whatever you want to call 2020, there's <laughs> so much happening. There's so much, what do I do? Where do I go? Question after question after question, ad nauseum. However, this guest believes that we only have two choices. And that is actually the name of his best-selling book, Just Two Choices. How can we be empowered and comforted by using this binary concept? I'd like to know more. I'm sure you'd like to know more. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome... Mr. Rakoski to the podcast. Rico, welcome to the podcast. And it's an honor and a privilege. It's just an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. I oh, appreciate it. Oh. Look, forward to that. Look forward to it. Yes. And potato, potato, it's Hamza instead of Hamza. Hamza, Hamza. My apologies. Yep. No worries. No worries. <laughs> So I do a lot of left field questions and then people are like, what the hell are you talking about? So my first question <laughs> to you, a great way to start a podcast, is are, are you always, do you get tired of people asking you if you are from Allentown, Pennsylvania? Uh, no. Okay. No, I've had, you're the first person who's ever asked me from Allentown. Really? Yeah, okay. brother, yeah one of my brothers lived in Allentown. So go ahead, tell me more. Yeah, well, uh, going over your bio, as people will learn through the course of the podcast, is that you're from Pennsylvania, and your parents were in the mining area. And so it made me think of Billy Joel, and we're living here in Allentown. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's, um, it, it's interesting you mention that, because as you asked the question, uh, Rakowski used to be a, like a 12-letter name and during the 1800s when you know, they immigrated. And uh, I'm half Italian and half uh, Slovak. And they started off coal mining in eastern Pennsylvania. You might have heard of the Molly Maguires and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, when, that, you know, when the coal ran out around Allentown and that part of Pennsylvania, my part of the family, part of them went to western Pennsylvania uh, over toward Pittsburgh. And so um, I'm, I'm actually from Pittsburgh and half part of the family lives, does live out that way. And it's a big state. And, you know, the other part of the family lives out, which is my side. Was out. Uh, grew up in the western slopes of Pennsylvania, so that's uh, that. That's where those coal mining towns are. Of course, uh, I'm originally from South Jersey, so I'm familiar with the S K Y ending <laughs> for last name yeah. for sure. And 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 you're used to people saying, "What did you just live off of?" <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the other question, since you're far west, is in the Highway Bowl. Who are you rooting for, the Steelers or the Eagles? Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I was just talking to a cousin who lives in New York, Pennsylvania, and I happened to notice in one of the pictures um, in his garage there, he has uh, he has the Eagles. You know, and I said, you know, you're you're, you're splitting the family, my friend. <laughs> go over here on this side. On this side of the family, you know, it's it's theater time. Theater, theater time. <laughs> yeah. It's always fun during the holidays, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're waiting for that Super Bowl. Yes. And uh, you know what? This holiday season, especially, you know, when we talk holiday season, there's holidays throughout the year. But specifically for Thanksgiving, Christmas, there's going to be a lot of heated discussions about the early first half of 2020. And uh, I'd like to, before we go into 2020, and thinking outside the box yeah. and going through two choices. I'd like to go a little bit over your background because I believe it's because of your background that you've adapted this whole visualization as a part of your two choices. And that is from your, your aeronautical expertise. So if you can go a yeah. little bit about um, your, your life in the aeronautics, if we can go from there. Oh, sure. Well, I appreciate you mentioning that because that's the difference between the word choice and quotation marks. You know, um, up until now, as I perceive it, you know, choice has always been a word. You know, there's uh, just two choices. 
and and I, I use the word just in front of the phrase. I don't usually say uh, only two choices or or two choices because um, the just kind of defines it. If you say two choices, it's too broad. You know, it's like okay, two choices, so what? And if you say only, it's almost like it's 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 almost like too tight. You know, but for me, if you say just, and it's also a common phrase, most people say, look, just two choices. You know, it, it, it to me it defines. Um, and I'm going to go woo-woo early on in the show, um, it defines living in the present moment because in the present moment, that's all there is actually. There are just two choices. You know, I either make a new and better choice toward what I want or I'm going to make a same old choice assuming that you don't like the same old choice and uh, you're going to, you know, not be happy about where you are. And so it's about managing those just two choices. But the education that came from, the, the education about that thought came from, you know, when you're in aviation, and this applies across the board, you know, Hamza, across, the, you know, you can be a parent and it's the same thing that's happening. It's going to be, there's 25 things to do at the same time. And you say, how do I do just two choices? Well, in aviation, when you're up there, my background, uh, flying for over 20 years, almost 24 years for Southwest Airlines, F-16 for the military, you know, from the moment you climb in the jet, and start flipping switches and doing everything that you're doing. Everything's going to be, everything on your checklist is on or off, right? Okay, I don't need the radar now. I'm going to keep it off until I get airborne to a certain point. I don't need certain features, be, so they're going to stay off until I need them to be turned on. And then later on in flight, you need some things turned off again that were already turned on. And you're not going to use them. So your whole process for hours on end, and it's not boring by any stretch of the imagination, is a just two choices moment. You know, you're looking at your fuel and then you say, okay, I got to look over here at my electrics. I got to look at the engine. So I got to be concerned about the passenger. So there's weather up ahead. Do I move? Do I go left or right? Climb up or down? Slow down, go faster. It's all performance based. And so with that thought in mind, you know, all of your cockpit r- arrangements are all visuals. There's no words up there. There's not the word choice up there. It's an image that, an infographic, it's just a huge infographic. And you go, Oh, my performance is exceeding the situation. I'm going too fast or I'm going too slow. And so everything you look at, all your switches, is all, they're all just two choices, which reflects exactly what life is about. And so that's kind of where the, I'll say the conditioning of the thought process got started. But where it really opened up is I was asked one time to speak with some elementary, with some high school kids who were in what back then were known as shop, you know, several years ago were known as shop classes. And it, I was asked to come in and talk like a career day kind of a thing. And a lot of the kids were going, well, how do you, how do you set goals or how do you make choices toward what you want? And there's a little bit of frustration and that's kind of where the idea evolves. I said, well, every moment there's just two choices. You either make a choice toward what you want, you identify what you want. And I went around the room and said, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? They said, so don't make a, don't make a choice toward what you don't want. You achieve your goal by consistently making choices toward what you do want. There are just two choices and whichever one you make the most, that's what it turns out to be. Mm-hmm. And that goes on for anything in life. So that's kind of how it got started. But it's, you're, you know, I, I appreciate the thought here is that it, it was, it was, you know, it's rooted in, in an aviation cross check mm-hmm. of performance. But all of our lives are that way. You know, if you're a parent, and you're making lunch for your, for your kids, just two choices. You know, you, if you got four kids, you know, which they all don't like the same foods, obviously. <laughs> and and you know, you're going to be bouncing around for 40 minutes, making just two choices. You're not going to make, 40 choices at one time for your four kids to have the lunch. It's going to be a seamless sequence, but that's everything in life. And so when you slow it down to just two choices, now you're able to, to own the individual choice as it happens. Mm-hmm. And so now you start to own your habits. So I hope that kind of leads into where you're headed on that. Absolutely. Direction. Yeah. It's a, it's a great foundation, if you will. And uh, I know at the beginning we were talking about sports, a little lighthearted, and it reminded me of a commercial several years ago where these athletes, football athletes, they were kind of upset. They were in an office environment and usually in corporate mm-hmm. or office environments, you, you know, we got to score, we got to score, or, you know, <laughs> we're 15 yeah. inches from scoring, right? And the, and the athletes yeah. were like, you guys don't understand what it's like to play football. And so I was just wondering from your end, do you get perturbed when people say, okay, we're going to take a 10,000 foot view of this situation? No, not at all. I, uh, it's interesting. Uh, it, I, I like your question and uh, I'll, fast forward to a degree to the thought that um, 
um, all of these things are choices and, 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 and every moment's a choice. So I've, and obviously through a lot of practice on my own, I mean, even sometimes I wake up like everybody else, you wake up in the morning, you're over, you're feeling overwhelmed in the first two minutes. You're feeling, you know, you're feeling frustrated. It's like, you know, 6,000 things to do. And how am I going to get started? And I, I start to laugh in about two minutes on my worst days. It takes me about two minutes to go, okay, you know how this works, Rico. It's just two choices. I can choose to continue to be frustrated or I can choose to continue to be overwhelmed or I can make a choice, a new and better choice that says, this is how I'm going to get on track and how I'm going to get my day started. And it sounds Pollyanna. It sounds kind of BS. It sounds kind of unrealistic. The bottom line is, what's my other choice? To continue to choose to be frustrated and overwhelmed and have that happen for the rest of the day? Or am I going to choose to get off that set of railroad tracks? Mm. And so, um, so I don't, um, it, it's become second nature to me. So um, things, things that, that happen, um, I, I don't mind any of these things that you're asking the question on whatsoever. In fact, they're, they're fun. I, I actually choose to have fun with it instead of choosing to be, um, you know, to uh, perhaps have it. I take it, you know, take it the wrong way because it's my choice, and 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 that's what I continue to work toward every day is my own personal mastery, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and 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 when I come from that, uh, believe me, when I say my own personal mastery, uh, I mean I'm working at it too. Oh, you know? I, absolutely. Yes. So does that kind of it kind of reach it? It's it, it, it's every moment is a choice. Every feeling is a choice, mm -hmm. and it, it, instead of taking instead of making it. Um, Instead of taking the fun away in life, it adds fun to life. Because if there's something that you're kind of concerned about that you don't think you can do, or I don't know if I should do that, uh, it's a bit of a stretch, I don't know if I got the money, I don't know if I'm smart enough, and then you remind yourself of just two choices and you go, well, I can keep telling my old, same old story, you know, or I can tell my new story. And so I use the phrase, I choose to tell my new story. Notice I use the phrase, in, the, in that phrase, it's I choose to. Mm. I choose to means I'm owning it. Not I'm not not I'm going to tell my new story. I say I choose to tell my new story. All of a sudden, I'm connected now, as opposed to being, you know, being a, on a rudderless rudderless ship. Mm -hmm. Now I'm holding the helm and I'm saying, you know, I choose to steer left or right. Okay. Yeah, I choose. Yeah. Well, let's use so a real let's use a real world example. And so since yeah. you're from Western Pennsylvania and we kind of <laughs> did that little joust, I'd like to do a shout out to the city of Camden, New Jersey, which was actually kind yeah. of down the road for me. And the reason I yeah. bring that city up is that is the birthplace of the first CEO of Southwest Airlines, Herb Keller. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. And so, yeah, just digging. It got some dirt under my nails a little bit for the interview. And <laughs> at that time, since you have that 20 plus years experience, I'm just thinking, you know, Southwest yeah. is the new kids on the block. So did you go through the just two choices exercise of going to the new kid on the block versus the tried, true, maybe stodgy or well-established airlines? What was your thought process? Well, actually, you know, um, depending on your spiritual perspective, uh, it was uh, it was a divine situation, mm. and um, meaning that nobody in the '90s, early '90s, no airline was hiring except Southwest Airlines. So when I was flying F-16s at the time, I was flying in the, in the Air National Guard. I'd come off active duty, went to the guard for a little while. Um, I wanted to go to the airline, and my luck was, you know, when I chose to go to the airline just as I started putting my applications in, they started to furlough, mm -hmm. except for Southwest. So I went to, so, uh, you know, I, I went to Southwest and I interviewed, I did interview training because I'd never done anything like this before. You know, I'd always, I'd, I'd gone right from college to, you know, the military. So I'd never worked for anybody else before other than the Air Force and, you know, the Air National Guard. So, you know, I didn't know how the airlines perceive things and every airline has their own um, selection criteria, what they're looking for, whether it's Delta or American United, everybody has their own way of, of meeting their call, you know, finding people that match up with their culture. And, um, Southwest were the only ones hiring. So, um, I went there and I had several friends from other airlines say, well, come work for a real airline after we start hiring again. And I never looked back because once I got to Southwest, I knew I was a match for Southwest because Southwest hired what I call hires the vibe. 
they, you know, you know, you you've read about Herb Keller. You know about Herb Keller. Herb Keller is, uh, you know, I've, I've been blessed to spend time with spend time with Herb Keller. Although I'm not one of the first founding people of Southwest Airlines ever, but I mean, they were founded in '71. But my point being, he is such a uh, dynamic, uh, unique, beyond unique individual who really has insights into human nature that are just absolutely phenomenal. And that's what I operate on. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a guy who operates on, um, you know, just let me tell you the numbers about how to do a descent profile or about how to calculate my takeoff distance or, you know, how to do something on fuel consumption. I'm not a mechanics kind of guy. Um, I can do the math, but you know, I'm, I'm a interactive kind of person and I would much rather be in a company where it has that spirit that's just unstoppable like you have at Southwest Airlines. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, uh, and so that's how I ended up in Southwest. Nobody else is hiring. My dad, my dad kind of asked me that one question, that question one time. He goes, son, he said, you really made a really wise decision going to Southwest Airlines. You know, because uh, it was a few years later after the airline started tanking again toward 2000, you know, and 2001. And I said, Dad, I got to be honest with you. <laughs> Nobody else was hiring. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, I could have screwed this up and, and gone to another carrier. And um, yeah, I'd have flown bigger jets and I might have done some other kind of flying, but the Southwest experience is, is in my heart of hearts a family beyond a family. So, um, you know, I found my home. That's a great story about just the foundation because, you know, uh, I guess a homey term is uh, for relationship, <laughs> right? For rela- I got to throw that in, right? <laughs> the branding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, the other day, yeah. Yeah, but, um, you know, for, for relationships. So the, the slang term or phrase is, you know, she wasn't there in the gym where you were shooting your practice shots. And so, you know, when they were the only ones hiring, I wonder if you were able or can you point to someone that also joined up with Southwest because they were the only ones hiring and then they jumped ship when they had, you know, rosier glasses on and then it didn't turn out to be a good decision to them. Did they come back or they were like, I wish I always stayed at Southwest. Did you ever experience anything like that? Oh, yeah, I've flown with several people like that and know several people that's happened to. I mean, the thing with Southwest is that back, you know, 25 years ago, it, it wasn't considered. I mean, it's, it's the largest domestic carrier and prior to COVID, you know, they're doing 4,000 flights a day. You know, mm-hmm. 4,000, mm-hmm. like 4,000, up and down, largest domestic carrier. Mm-hmm. And, um, but they, you know, they still have this idea or, you know, um, other major airlines still have this idea that you're not a real airline pilot because you work at Southwest. Mm-hmm. Although we find, you know, in many ways we fly the same equipment, except we don't, we're not up in the 787 range, you know, flying 787s, flying Dreamliners or, you know, 7.4s or, you know, some of that stuff, 7.6s, 7.5s. We're not flying those, those kind of airplanes. So, you know, it's like uh, you're not in a real, you know, you're not a, a real airline pilot 25 years ago is basically the outlook. Southwest Airlines has never laid anybody off in 49 years, mm-hmm. never. And so, so if you find people who, would chase the money because the, uh, the pay rates uh, at, the t- at the time um, that those kind of situations happened in late 90s, or, or, or sorry, yeah, late 90s and early 2000s, that if they chase the money to another major carrier, um, they didn't, the other major carriers didn't have that stability. And so there were people who, you know, that went over there and found themselves out, in the, the phrase goes out in the street, found themselves furloughed. Mm-hmm. And if, what happens in the airline industry you know, it's all unionized, and so, you know, you could have worked at a company for, as a pilot, being a 747 captain over to another major carrier, I mean, just mentioning it's over at, say, United, and you come to Southwest Airlines, and you're, you're at the bottom of the seniority list on the right seat of a 737, mm-hmm. and, you know, and so 15 years as a captain flying a 747 doesn't count. Uh, it's just the way the structure of the airline industry is within the pilots, not everywhere else, and you can... You know, as an executive and stuff, you can move around from position to position and not lose, let's say, seniority or you know, pay. But whenever you're the pilot is the pilot situation and flight attendant situation, seniority list based on date of hire. So when you switch, you start at the bottom again. Mm. Yeah, so there have been some people. 
out, who bailed out and gone somewhere else to going, they took the risk and said, yeah, I'm going to go over here because I want to fly a 767, 787, the pay's better, whatever. And then, you know, they're not as stable as the company isn't as stable as Southwest and, and then they're out. I think that's a theme in, in 2020 from the aspect of loyalty. Uh, but before I go into that, I always share this story be- or joke because I live in Atlanta, which is the hub of, you know, world travel because it's direct flight sure. anywhere. But uh, Delta is the, the main hub here. Did you ever hear what the acronym stands for? Um, no, I, I, <laughs> I, if I have, I, 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 I wouldn't say it anyway because... I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'll say it. I don't have any problems with it. So it, it's yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it doesn't ever leave the airport. Oh, okay. No, I, I didn't. I haven't. I've not heard that. Yeah, I have not heard that. Yeah, a nice little joke. It wasn't too disparaging. Uh, but I guess <laughs> I guess it's a double entendre. You know, today in 2020 doesn't ever leave the airport. Uh, every industry has been impacted this year, uh, airlines yeah. included, and uh, you're on the inside. And so uh, one thing that I've seen is, okay, we're, we're going to slowly start flying again, and maybe we'll have the middle seat open. And then when people get on the plane, it's a full plane. So when we have two choices, is it the, the best play to, when things open up, to jump out? Or would you wait and see what happens? What do you mean, as a as far I mean, as a passenger? Yeah, as far as a passenger getting back out, there's a lot of people like myself that are used to flying anywhere. Like like you said, there's so many flights with Southwest, which I definitely uh, support. And by taking um, yeah, and not that I'm not just saying that. <laughs> no, but you know, if you know, I would, um, so I put that in the same category as, um, because it's if it is a just two choices moment. You know, it's, it's always a just two choices. Life is always a just two choices moment. It's just that some people, and I guess the parallel I'll draw is that some people wear masks all the time and wear plastic gloves. And other people don't wear masks, don't wear plastic gloves. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so it's going to be, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be in the individual just two choices. And that's what's kind of interesting about this situation with COVID that's happened. You know, um, it, in some ways, it, it, it's, I mean, it's really heightened the awareness of choice before choice was something that was much more overlooked, you know, cause you said we were calm and we're used to saying phrases like, Oh, take massive positive action. You know, of course, massive positive action, you massive positive and action is only activated by choice. Right. Mm-hmm. So massive positive action is downwind of you, any of us making a choice because you're either going to take massive positive action or you're not. What I'm referring to here is that, you know, our, our take positive action, um, progress that we've made since the 1930s with Maggie, with, uh, Norman Vincent Peale and with Napoleon Hill, um, those seeds got planted in the earth in the 1930s by those three. Um, and, and of course you probably are aware that 1952 when, when, uh, uh what was the book, uh, Think, thinking positive or positive thinking or whatever by Norman Vincent Peale came out. Mm-hmm. He was he was sidelined, man. His the professionals in the psychology arena all backed up and said, "Man, people are going to get hurt for them to start to have to take choices for themselves. Mm-hmm. They're not choices, but for them to think positive on their own without professional help." He, so they distanced themselves from him. They isolated themselves from Norman Vincent Peale. As we know, the past eighty or ninety years has turned into enormous an enormous industry but it's what i call the take massive or take action industry mm-hmm. but we've evolved beyond the take action industry we are in what i call now we're, we're backing it up to the fundamental and let's go let's use the word of your show you know the intrinsic value of what humanity is built upon and intrinsic is means you know inherent built in basic you know essential fundamental all those things or what intrinsic means, and choice is intrinsic. It's inescapable. It's unavoidable. And so now the idea of, well, gee, i got to take massive positive action. How do I do that? I choose 
to take positive action. Now when you say the phrase, I choose to, now there's the ownership there. I don't use the word responsibility. I like the idea of I'm taking ownership of my choices. I choose to be afraid to fly. I'm not saying that's bad if somebody were to say that. I choose to not fly right now. It's not anybody else's choice. It's not society's choice. It's my choice. I choose not to wear a mask. I choose not to go to the airport till August. You, you, you feel the difference there? Mm-hmm. We're talking about ownership, and that's what COVID has brought out with regard to just two choices and this next level of play that I think humanity's at now. It's launched us into this part of humanity that, that this, oh, I got to recognize my choice because choice has always been seamless. Mm-hmm. It's always been there. We don't even use the word choice. We say like, oh, uh, you need to focus. You need to pay attention, right? Well, the rest of the sentence really is, you need to choose to focus. You have to choose to pay attention or choose to give your attention to. Because when you give your, when you choose to put your attention somewhere, what happens? You energize it, right? Mm -hmm. Choice flips the switch. And there are just two choices. You're going to flip it to what you want, some variation of what you want, or it's going to be some variation of what you don't want. And so, you know, the, the model that has replicated the human mind is the computer with the binary system that was invented by Claude Shannon in 1932 at MIT as a graduate student, which was, hey, wait a minute. We don't have to use all these mechanical levers and strings and wires. We can do it with a switch because he was an electrical engineer. On, off, zero, one. And that's where the information age was born. Mm-hmm. It's binary. And humans are humans have always been operating on binary. There's no such thing as, as you know, I'm a... Um, multitasking. No, you're not. You're doing a boatload, one after another, of just two choices, mm-hmm. very quickly. Which is what happens when you fly an airplane. But it also is what happens when you're taking care of your kids. Which is also what happens right now where you, while we're doing this show. You're watching your instruments or your, you know, all your levers and sounds and all the things that you have in front of you. You're, it's, it's not multitasking while we're talking right now. It's just two choices, but your attention is moving quickly from one thing to another to another to keep everything in balance. And so that's my answer. I'm sorry, I went longer than I thought, but you know, that's the answer that goes back to how do you step back into flying in you know, this kind of a situation, if I understood your question correctly. It's going to be the individual choice, whether they make the empty seat in the middle you know, for the next six months or not, it's still going to be, do I choose to feel comfortable go fly? And am I going to, am I going to accept that I have to wear a mask when I fly? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? No, I'm not going to accept it. Well, then don't fly. You're not, you know, it's just, it's a just two choices seamless process. I hope that helps. But. No, that helps tremendously. It makes me think of uh, the calls I get from attorneys. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, and so, I mean, they're great. They're great clients and all that good stuff. But anyway, they have a really interesting perspective. And so, as you were talking about that choice, it made me think of a number of things, but it made me, uh, one of which was the uh, these recent uh, Republican rallies. I believe they had to sign the disclaimer saying that they would not come back and sue if they were to catch anything by going to these events. So is it better in our, co- our company's cold for doing that they're going to say well it was your choice to fly the plane and then that way they're no longer liable that way they're covered and they're giving you the ownership is that the ideal scenario now yeah i'm, I'm i personally uh I'm, I'm, I'm not skirting answering your question it's my life i'll choose to do what i choose to do whatever their logic is that's behind it i choose to either accept that or i choose to not accept that mm-hmm. that's how i see it I mean, that goes with flying, that goes with whether I go to some kind of rally or I don't go to a rally. You know, it's going to be my choice. You know, I accept, I mean, I, because life is that level as I see it. And again, I'm not trying to skirt answering it. It always comes down to, I have, you know, I own my choices. So you, you remind me, you have time for a quick story? Go for it. Okay. So I was interviewing, um, I had a radio show for, from 2015 to 2017. And um, I, it was the Just Two Choices uh, we call it celebrity radio show because the guy that I was working with, you know, he was able to get celebrities to come on the show. I mean, and I said, I said, look, I'd like to have this show if I could to ask celebrities one question at the end of the show. And I'm going to ask you the question first before I give you the answer. Okay. And the question I asked celebrity, Roger Staubach, um, Rudy Rudiger, 
uh, Robert Kiyosaki from Rich Dad Poor Dad, uh, several NFL Super Bowl ring, NBA rings, uh, uh, Olympians, gold, 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 um, actresses, musicians. I asked them the same question. So NASCAR racers, okay? Mm-hmm. And here's the question. What percentage of life is choice? And what percentage of life is circumstance? Uh, oh. What's your answer? You know, now you're getting, right now I'm just saying you're, you're laughing about it, and that's exactly what every one of these very accomplished 40 people, virtually every one of them said the same, just had that same response. So there's no right or wrong, you know. Um, what's your perception? And, I'll, and then I'll, I'll tell you some of the other answers because it ties back to what you were asking before. Okay. I'm just thinking when, when if that question is posed, I'm thinking uh, of... I just did. Yeah. What's that? You just did? Yeah, yeah, I just posed it, so go ahead. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just thinking of, of um, circumstances happen, but it's your perception of how you respond to it. So it could be... So a, what, on a scale from 100 to, 100 to 0, what percentage is choice? And, you know, is it 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20, 20, 40? I mean, 20... Um, Pick a number. Okay. I've got to do this. With, I virtually have to do this with every celebrity. So don't, don't feel uncomfortable. About oh, no. It. I, so, I, I love this stuff. So I would say that the choice, is, again, hmm, I'd probably say 60-40. Okay. Um, let me tell you, I think the, the best answer that I heard. Okay. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Rudiger from the movie Rudy, who wrote that movie, mm-hmm. answered, it, answered it this way. Uh, Dr. John Gray from uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are For Venus. Mm-hmm. He goes, uh, uh, you know, I, well, you know, it kind of depends on, on this or that, but he, I'd say 100%. Mm-hmm. You know, um, um, and, and, but Rudy Rudiger summarized it really well. Rudy, in his South Chicago, you know, Juliet kind of accent, you know, says, well, considering that your circumstances you're in, you got there because of choices that were made. Okay. okay? Unconscious or conscious. Okay. And your next, your next circumstance mm. can be created by a choice. Isn't right. It? Yes. And it has to be a hundred percent choice. Mm. Now it was interesting when I asked that to Roger Staubach, you know, from the NFL, mm. from Dallas Cowboy Heisman trophy winner, you know, MVP and all that stuff. Roger goes, Ooh, good question. He goes, Roger says, I think it's a uh, 40% choice. 60% circumstance. Mm. And the reason he said that was, was he goes, man, I grew up in a great family, grew up in a great place. My parents stayed together. I was an only child. I was able to go to a great school, I had great coaches, great teachers. And there are other people, other kids who don't have those opportunities or aren't in those circumstances. But the, 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 the point of the question is one's awareness of how much of life is choice mm-hmm. and owning only owning your choices, you know, and, you know, it's, it's tough to say hundred percent. And I've had several, um, D Wallace, for example, who was, um, who was in ET and Cujo and all his other movies, D just blurted it out. He had a life's hundred percent choice. And so when you think about and know the just two choices diagram, it makes sense. You know, if I want to be successful, I have to choose that success direction. And for people be listening, there's a, if you don't, can I say something about the download? Would that be all right? Oh, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a download that you can go to for example, forward slash. It's just with the number two choices.com forward slash radio. And so the free download has a, has a visual, a picture of the just two choices diagram, what every tr- on any subject, legal, health, politics, it doesn't matter. Says, and this is what it looks like, kids. It's all just two choices. So you take the peace sign. And any row finger points up is choice one. And when your middle finger points down, that's choice two. And where your two fingers, your index, and your middle finger come together, that's the choice point. And so when you look at choice as a visual, as opposed to it just being a word, now you see the direction of the flow of the energy that every choice makes. So now you can see how you can actually own, I mean, literally, literally, and run your finger over the diagram and say, oh, yeah. Every time I make a choice to, to, uh, to go back into an old family pattern or an old habit that, that I don't like, I have to own it. And, and one of my habits that I've had in the past that I don't have anymore because of just two choices was, I call it road drama. I never gave anybody any hand gestures. I did 
smacked the steering wheel on the dashboard, and I did use choice language, and I got tired of it. And I said, you know, Rico, you know how Just Two Choices works. Why are you doing this to yourself? This guy who's driving, you know, this person who just cut you off in traffic, they're not the, they're not the reason you're not happy. You're not happy because you're not choosing to be happy. I have to own my happiness. Happiness is a choice, as I see it. Mm-hmm. And so, I, you know, I said to myself, and I practiced it. People would cut me off. I'd have things happen in traffic. And now I just kind of say, wow, that was close. The person came from the right and went three lanes to the left <laughs> and cut off a whole bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Now I go, wow, that was close. Thank goodness nothing happened. But in the past, I would have been much more frustrated with that. So I'm free of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that the freedom is so incredible. Not ruining my day for three hours because some blankety blank, blank, blank person was speeding and cut me off trying to come in some on ramp on on uh, some exit on some place on the Jersey Turnpike <laughs> just to talk just to talk exit numbers. Mm. So now I own I own my choice. I mean, but what is happiness? A rhetorical question. Happiness, in my opinion, is a choice. I choose to be happy regardless of what's going on around me. My circumstance. I mean, if not, then you're always going to be controlled by your circumstances, right? You're choosing. You're choosing. To let your circumstances be eighty or ninety percent of the reason you're making your choices. So, who owns you? And then when I'm talking to myself too, to the audience, so you know, I'm talking to myself too because I work on this myself every day. Mm-hmm. You know, I own me. Politics, politics don't own me. The airlines don't own me. My relatives don't own me. You know, people who are in my life don't own me, who I work with don't own me. I own my choices. And when I own my choices, my life gets a whole lot better because immediately, because I start choosing to make new and better choices. And next thing you know, you're going to put yourself into a position where the circumstances around you change. Because, you know, um, I mean, um, everything starts with us. It starts on the inside. It's not on the outside. And by trying to control outside situations, so that we can feel happy on the inside, everybody's always going to control you. Everybody outside of you is always going to control you. So, so I mean, that's, that's the reality of, yeah. as I perceive it. That's, that's my reality, and that's what I work on every day with the, the idea. There are just two choices right now. I can choose to be upset. I can choose to be frustrated, or I can choose to say, you know what? There's a new and better way to do this. I don't see it yet. I'm confident it's coming. Mm-hmm. Somebody can say to me, well, that's Pollyanna. And I'll say, that's okay. Because the other choice I could have made was to be frustrated again and have ruined my, the next 15 minutes of my life over something I really don't need to ruin my life over. Right. So anyway, yeah, that's I, I, like, going with it. I like it. But in, in the mean, I think we're on the same page, but I want to dog ear the page for a second because I like, I like to talk about Senor Starback and I'm a little partial to his answer uh, just because I, I actually, we used to work with him uh, when I was in corporate. He had a, he opened a project management firm here in Atlanta and we were a design uh-huh. firm, so we actually worked with him. And that 4060 resonates with me because uh, it makes, when you were talking about the, the scholar at MIT with the computer, it, it made me think of um, both John Rockefeller and Google and what they, sure. what they, what those two entities have in common is that uh, in the present moment, there are a lot of people, this is my choice. I'm taking ownership of my choices. And there was an industry that kind of blew up and literally when it, I mean, not literally, but figuratively, and when it mushroomed because people didn't know what they were doing, then Rockefeller and Google both were able to come in and buy those companies for pennies on the dollar. Now, were they constantly in that binary decision or were they waiting to see just because that's the nature of business? And, and I'm kind of doing that just because as a propeller head, I always think of software. And when software comes out, <laughs> Right, I mean, yeah. I, I can't help it. <laughs> so I'm gonna. Not, since you don't get angry, I'm gonna. Look, I'm trying to look at it from a ten thousand foot view here. <laughs> well, what, are you trying? Are you trying to get me angry? No, no, not at all. I would love to, <laughs> but you know, it has to be. It has to be natural. It can't be like, hey, just come on, we're gonna get you angry. But no, <laughs> right. like who owns you? Well, let's see semantics. So, but but with um, 
with software, we always wait. I mean, now, fortunately, unfortunately, most uh, people wait out and wait until the product goes out of beta because when it's in beta, there's a lot of bugs, right? And now, if I were to bring it into 2020, there's a lot of beta conversations about. I mean, I can't say the words because Google will flag the video, but you know, people are going to rush out. In that moment, I'm taking that decision to, uh, I'm taking ownership of my choices, but I think some of the seasoned people that aren't even in the in the medical realm are kind of looking at it from a software standpoint. Like, in this moment, I'm going to wait until beta goes out, make sure they get all the bugs out, and then I'll participate. Well, first of all, um, how many, before the program is even, um, for the, for the program to become a beta operable system that gets put out, correct? Mm -hmm. A beta operable system that, that gets put out. It has to have individual lines of code, right? Mm -hmm. So, and what are those codes? Those codes, the way they're written, and, and I don't, I, I, I've seen what code looks like, so don't, you know, you, you can help me out with this. I appreciate it. You know, the ZQR01 hashtag blah 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 if it's missing that if it's missing the hashtag or it's missing missing the queue it's not going to contribute to the next line of code right right it's just two choices we either put the queue in or we don't right right so as i perceive what we're talking about is this beta thing is a summation of gazillions of just two choices lines of code mm. because those codes have to be able to work together to be able to make sure the beta even comes out but if the beta doesn't come out then you don't have an operable product of just two choices moment do we have an operable product no the beta is not done yet we, have, we haven't worked out the bugs in the beta yet just two choices mm -hmm. okay well do we work out do we want to work out the bugs in the beta or do you want the beta always to stay the beta always to stay the beta just two choices well my answer is we want to work out the bugs in the beta okay just two choices a line of code at a time we've got to work out the bugs and changing one letter one number one symbol within a line of code is a choice, right? And mm -hmm. the other choice is to leave it what it was. And, but what it was didn't work. It made the, the beta ugly. It made the beta the wrong color, it, whatever. Well, then just two choices. We change it to a code that makes it green instead of fuchsia. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's all just, so it, it's, you know, it, it, it's the universe. The universe has this infinite, seamless way of doing zero and one binary and so you know people so some people are going to say you know what yeah i'm the way to all the bugs the just two choices millions of little bugs but just two choices get worked out in the beta and then i'm going to go and i'm going to do whatever you're telling me you're going to do once it gets launched and and then we're going to buy that product or we're going to sell that product off or we're going to wait for we're going to choose to wait until people realize the product's not that good the cost is low and we're going to choose to buy it. Just two choices. It's all mm -hmm. just two choices. Mm -hmm. As I see it. Did I, did I answer the question? I mean, you did. I, I like playing with it. And, and thanks for participating. Uh, because yeah, well, no, thanks for the thought. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the second part of that question is kind of going back to Mr. Starback. So in the industry, yeah. uh, there's two, in, in, in construction, there's usually two phases, at least from a design standpoint. So this is okay. from corporate, and it's from uh, government, and it's from higher ed. So all of those, okay. they, they usually have entity A, okay? And then you have people like Roger and us that realize, oh, we have, it's called a program. So they have this program, which is kind of funny. I'm not going to play on the words with program. That's a whole other conversation. But <laughs> program, in essence, is, let's say the fee is $5 million, okay? And so we're okay, like, right. okay, I'm going to go, if I'm just starting, now, let, now me, since I've been around the sun a couple of times, I'm sure you have too, when I was younger and went behind the ears, I'm like, yeah, program, $10 million, because I'm commissioned, right? Commission on top of salary. So I'm like, yeah. But then the older folks that had been around the sun more times than me, or I, for the in English majors, they would say, Hamza, shoo that $5 million because the design is $20 million. So what would happen in our industry is few people would get in, let's say it was public. So if it was a government or higher ed, they 
the entity A couldn't use the same firm. So if I got hired for the program, I'm more than likely not going to get the design. And so your, de- your job as the design, as the program is finished, is to punch a, bo- a bunch of holes into it so you can prove your work. Like if industries are built off of these binaries of moving forward sure. and or sure. sitting and waiting. So just, just kind of playing with that. Uh, the thought process of your name. You know, it's, no, that's interesting. The words you use too, and I appreciate the words. You, you know, uh, moving. I think you said moving forward, mm-hmm. and the other just two choice choices was sitting and waiting. Right. Mm-hmm. You use the language. You use just two choices language, and 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 perhaps that's that's the exciting part that I feel about this era that we've, we're moving into. And I'm not talking. I'm I'm just talking about consciousness here. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not talking about any other stuff that's going on on the planet. I'm just saying consciousness-wise, we're moving into this awareness that it's all choice. Mm-hmm. It's not take massive positive action. You know, it's, wow, I have a choice here. And what is my choice? Now, you know, some choices are going to be more difficult than others. There's no question about that. Um, it's just that there still are just two choices. I can keep doing what I was doing before and end up with the same thing that I've always had, or I can make a new and better choice. And uh, that's kind of what this handout is about. I call Captain Hook you. And it's got a Captain Hook at the end of the arrow that points downward, you know, with a middle finger. If you, if you took the hand up, made a peace sign, turned it sideways. It, you know, the arrow points down to number two. It's got a Captain Hook kind of char- character down there because, you know, when we get, when we start making those choices in that same old direction, you know, we, we feel like we're stuck. We start to say things, I'm stuck. We start to say things like, I can't break that, that, that habit or it's a bad habit. I'm trying to break it. You don't break a habit. The way, the way you change it, you create a new habit because energy can only flow in one direction. It's binary. And mm-hmm. so, and so if you want to, if you want to, if you want to change a habit, that's a, what you would say to be, um, you know, like a bad habit. And the thought to me would be, well, tell me what your new habit is that you want to create and then use your just two choices to start talking about all the things that you want to create because you're not going to be able to energize what you can't or what you don't want you're only going to energize what you do want because energy only flows when you choose to make the energy flow. You know, Yoda had a, I mean, Luke Skywalker, a long time ago, had one of his quotes that I thought was fabulous. You know, Luke says to Yoda, he goes, is the dark side stronger? And Yoda says, no, it's quicker, easier, more seductive. Just two choices, right? Mm -hmm. First, when you want to create a new habit, a new way of looking at things, something that's new and better, it's, 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 it's quicker and easier to go back to the same old way of doing things mm-hmm. than it is to start that new choice. But every habit, even if it's a bad habit, started by one choice at a time. Mm-hmm. And so now, you know, you start to make that choice, that choice in that direction. So as I hear you, you know, asking the question, you know, it's, it, it, it still boils down to, even in our language, we're unaware of it. it you just use, it, you know, the, the words were um, just two choices related words, you know, where one thing compared to the next. Mm-hmm. And and that's how you know. And I want to go a little bit woo woo again from the point of view boron. And I'm not a chemistry guy. It's just the thought that came to mind was you know boron has five electrons, carbon has six. Somebody somewhere something's making a choice that's saying in order to have another element, you've got to have a sixth electron. Nitrogen has seven electrons. It doesn't have six because if it had six, it would be carbon. Mm -hmm. And nitrogen is an oxygen because it has seven electrons and oxygen has eight. You know, something somewhere is making a choice. You know, pine tree is a pine tree and it's not an apple tree. Why? Something somewhere are just two choices. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be an apple tree or are you going to be a pine tree? So it's everywhere around us. It's just it's it's an invisible fabric. Choice is this part of the invisible fab- fabric that exists out there. It is kind of humorous in a lot of ways, I think, because that's, you know, the universe operates on this seamless comparison. Too dark, too light, too cold, too warm. Um, do I feel comfortable? Do I feel uncomfortable? Does that taste great or does it taste not so good? Mm-hmm. Let me ask you All about. Let me ask you about being comfortable, and you said it's easier to go back to the same old way. Okay, and so. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to all the children that are about to turn 19 this year. And that is because they are the 9-11 babies. And Mm -hmm. after 9-11 happened, from a binary standpoint, 
I'm changing my circumstance. My percentage is 100%, right? For the first maybe six months to a year, hence the, the 9-11 babies. But then that year later, they kind of fell back to, um, you know, flipping off people on the turnpike and things like that. And it seems, you know, the, it, there's been a number of points in history where it repeats itself. I think today would be one of those where I'm totally changing my life now. What would be that person's perspective in June 2021? What, what's your thoughts on going back to the same old way? That's their choice. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not avoiding the question. It's just, you know, um, you know, I was just reading a book I got yesterday uh, called Relentless mm-hmm. by uh, Tim Grover. Um, he was a uh, um, Glover Grover. He was the uh, um, coach or the, you know, personal trainer for Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, you know, and I had the opportunity to meet him um, a few months ago and, um, and just got to, you know, I was just so blessed that I even got to ask him a question. So really nice guy. And I said, how do you, how do you coach a Michael Jordan? You know, how do you coach a, a Kobe Bryant? I mean, what, what is it? I mean, they're such outstanding athletes. Mm-hmm. What is it that you're looking for? I mean, and he says, you find in the way they do something and, and they themselves are cooperating with this, you're able to observe them and see that they're doing something in my words, not his. Okay. Mm-hmm. My words are that it's an in- inefficient movement. It's maybe an inefficient way that you're passing or that you're receiving a pass or that you're stepping. And so I look for those little inefficiencies and I show them how to make them efficient. Mm-hmm. And even though to many other people, they are small, they made a huge difference to them. It's just that, as he said, he's mentioned, because I spent several hours looking through the book last night, several times throughout the book, he talks about several athletes and several people who, who said, no, I'm not going to continue on this process. And they walked, and he said, okay, then, then don't stick with me. Choose to go with somebody else. And that's what I would say to answer your question is, you know, I don't know why these athletes didn't stick with Tim. And I don't know why these kids are making the choices that they're making. And, you know, so here's an athlete who's making, you know, contracts and the millions and millions of dollars playing basketball, choosing to be less of an athlete for whatever reason he chose to be. And Tim would just say, okay, we're done working together because you don't want to take that next step. You want to go back to how you were before. And Tim's not about that. He says, that's not who I am. So my reputation is about taking the next level. You say you want two NBA rings, championship rings. We're going to start with three. You say you want six. I'm going to start with seven. Mm -hmm. That's just the kind of guy Tim is. And so that's what I would say to those kids. I can't answer the reason why they've chosen to go back to where they were before. Mm -hmm. Because there's a way to get back to being that dynamic person that you were describing in the very beginning. Only happens by choice and only happens by their choice. Mm-hmm. You know, I, um, you know, one of my favorite phrases is you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Mm-hmm. What a, what a phrase that goes for anybody anywhere in life. And that basically happened with Tim, you know, $48 million contract athlete deciding he doesn't want to drink the water. And Tim says, okay, don't drink the water. Mm-hmm. We're done. And the guy goes and selects another team, makes a little bit more money, but sits the bench and has a lukewarm career. Mm-hmm. And, and not that Tim's always right, but Tim tried to show him the opportunity to make the new and better choice, which is the only way he was going to improve his, was to improve his performance is to make the new and better choice. But that, and, and what I like about reading about Tim's book is that's what applies to me too. The only way I can make a new and better life is to continue to choose and make a new and better life. It's just, he's shown it from, you know, from these professional athletes, you know, points of view. So that's, that would be how I feel about anybody. It doesn't matter whether it's a 19 year old or, because there's, you know, because there's 65 and 75 year olds who are living phenomenal lives by choice, and mm-hmm. they've come from crappy situations. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's plenty who've come from crappy situations who've turned things around. And there's, and and as I've had in these interviews uh, with some of these celebrities, some of them went to some pretty deep, dark places, mm-hmm. and admirably, they chose to come back. They made the just two choice to say. I'm not making that choice too anymore of alcohol or drugs or whatever it is that they were doing that took them off their path for five, seven, ten years. 
I'm choosing to come back and to live as a healthy individual. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Which brings me to my last question, and it, this is again a shout out to mm-hmm. Herb Kelleher and to yeah. Tim, right? So you if they're you leading that horse to water, and they won't drink. But then they come back a year later, like, I see the error of my ways. Do you let them, do you forgive them for their sins and bring them on? Or you say, hey, you know what, you had your shot and, uh, you know, make another choice. I don't know. I mean, it, it, I think every, I think every, and I'm being very candid, I think every situation is different. You know, we had, we, we've had some guys who have come back, you know, pilots who have come back. Um, and, um, they, they went somewhere else or they went and did something else and came back. Um, one of them was, um, really, really respected guy. I mean, just, uh, if, you know, just for background, flew Navy F 14s off carriers, you know, very accomplished, very respected in the company. He chose to go do something else. Everybody tried to talk him out of it. They tried to talk him into maybe taking a little bit of time off and whatever he chose to do, I mean, it, it, it tanked mm. and, you know, he had to go through the interview process just like everybody else that was being rehired. Fortunately, he left with a great reputation. And, you know, that's part of it, too. Mm-hmm. You know, did you leave with a great reputation? Mm-hmm. Did you burn, or did you burn that bridge and you told Herb Kelleher some things that maybe you regret that you shouldn't have told Herb Kelleher? You know what I mean? And so there's a lot of factors that go, you know, that go into that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that, that's my one experience with the. Uh, Somebody who, who came back and everybody was so glad to see this guy come back. Mm-hmm. He's just just a class act human being. But others, you know, um, there's others that come to think of it. There's some others that that weren't asked to come back, or or if they wanted to come back, they weren't invited to continue with the hiring process. You know, so it's individual, I'd say. Yeah, I think that's a good takeaway for the holiday season because <laughs> there's a lot of people that are heated, right? But you don't want to burn that bridge. So the world is too small. Um, so if you, you that, I yeah. choose to not burn a bridge, <laughs> if you have to write it on the chalkboard like Bart Simpson. <laughs> that is yeah, I, I, I would, yeah, I, I would write this. And this is the phrase I would write. I, I would write, I choose to keep the bridge open. Mm. See, see, this is something that we all, and, Again, I, something I work on too every day is that we, 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 in society, we have these ways of talking about what we don't want and creating these, these, these things like, oh, I'm not going to burn a bridge before I leave. Or we say phrases, you'll see them on, on envelopes for payments for your electrical bill or for other things. They'll say, don't forget. Well, why don't you say, remember? Mm-hmm. See? So, so talk about what we want. We want to remember. So put that in our mind. We want to keep the bridge open, why should we talk about burning? I don't want to burn a bridge. What an ugly feeling, mm. you know, to take with me when I leave a, co- you know, when I choose to leave a company. I, I feel, you can feel the difference in the vibe. You know, you can say, man, I choose to keep this bridge because I'm choosing to go somewhere else to do something that's high vibe, and I'm choosing to keep this bridge open, or, you know, I'm choosing not to burn this bridge. Now you're now you're going going at it with less confidence because you're basically you're putting the vibe out there with. I hope this choice I'm making doesn't backfire on me and now I have to come back. The other way, you're saying, I'm building something better. I'm building something bigger. And you know what? It might be to my benefit to come back to where I am right here after I learned what I just learned over there. Mm-hmm. And I'm keeping that open. So you can feel the difference. To me, I, it feels like you know the higher vibe, the upliftment that says, yeah, this is what I want to do. I'm mm-hmm. giving just two choices. Right, what I want or what I don't want. So that, that- I always give my attention to now, that's a really good point, Rico. You're talking about the subconscious and the conscious mind because the subconscious can't make the differentiation of using the word not. So I don't, exactly. right, do not. I'm going to burn a bin somehow. I'm going to, that's the, I think you're talking <laughs> self-sabotage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, and, you know, one of the benefits of just two choices is that you get double benefit. When you choose what you want, you energize what you want. And it, the other benefit is, is it de-energizes what you don't want. Mm. So you're not watering the plant. You're not watering the weeds. You're not watering the cactuses. You're not watering the stuff that you don't want. You're watering the flowers that you do want, the things that you do want to bloom and that you do want to blossom. So that's the double benefit in a Just Two Choices thing. And you can see it on the diagram, you know, justtwochoices.com forward slash radio. When you download that, by the way, you can cut it out and hang it up on your mirror in your car or you can hang it up around the house. 
and show you that that cap and hook you thing that takes you in the direction of the same old so you can continue to make you can look at it and go oh man i need to make this new and better choice my new habit in my life mm-hmm. that's a good way to stop it because you're talking about there's a lot of modality to learn, but it seems like it's especially yeah. for you that the visualization takes you beyond, even if you're thinking or you're having this moment in the present, that visualization's expanding the present moment, feels like. Yeah, and, and, and it comes from aviation because the cockpit, you know, the, the flight deck is, is, it's all visual. It's all colors, you know, it's all indicators. And so I'm used to, I'm used to processing you know, 35 years in different airplanes, looking at instruments and, and, and no words saying, you need to do this. I need to do that next. You know, I'm too fast and too slow. Oh, I'm right on speed. I'm doing exactly what I need to do. Descending properly or, you know, and it's just, you know, it's just that constant process of, of, of performance oriented. Again, it's not exhausting. It's not over overwhelming. It's just that it's a just two choices moment throughout the entire flight. From the moment you push back from the gate to the moment you stop at the gate with zero airspeed and say, thank you for flying with us. Mm-hmm. And for, the, for those listening to this, you were, we talked a lot about living in the present moment. So don't put off going to the site and getting to download. But Rico also tell us at the present moment, what is the website so they can pick up, pick up your book and find out everything else you have going on? Well, you're very kind. Just, it's just two with a number two choices.com just to the number two choices.com and or send me an email at rico at just two choices.com and love to hear from you and i'm uh, just so appreciative of of our time and ability to to chat about these things thanks for spread, stretching the brain it's been a lot of fun <laughs> absolutely, absolutely man well you have just been attuned to another episode of intrinsic motivation from a homie's perspective this was hamza and in party words i do have to say go eagles though rick yo rico <laughs> <laughs> well i i I, I choose to feel sorry for you. <laughs> Every, I, I choose to let you have your fantasy. <laughs> Very nice. Well, I choose to stay in touch, so let's definitely stay in touch, man. I appreciated it. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, God bless you. Thanks again. This has been great fun, and, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Rico. Okay, Hamza. Bye-bye. Cheers. Cheers.